Hi, this is Alex from Alert Labs, and today we'll be going over how to use your online dashboard now that your Sentry is up and running. The first thing to understand is that there are three types of account. If you've just finished registering your business, then you've just created an admin account. An admin is the main account to which all sensors and employee accounts are linked. There is only one admin account. They are able to remove and add team members, as well as view diagnostic data, adjust settings, and add sensors. A team member is the next kind of account. It should be used by anyone in your organization with whom you wish to share monitoring access. To add a team member, the admin account does the following. Go to Account Settings, select Add Team Member, enter their email address, hit Enter, and click Send. An email has now been sent to them that will allow them to create a team member account. Alternately, if they've already created an account, this process will still add them as a team member, but will also add any sensors that they were currently monitoring. They will have access to view all of the sensors on the main account and can also adjust settings. They have the ability to register sensors. However, they cannot add or delete other team members. Team member access should be shared with any employee who's going to be doing installs, monitoring, or using Sentry for diagnostic and service purposes. To that end, let's look at the data that an admin and team member can see. We'll start from the properties view. This breaks down the sensors you monitor by address. Basic readings and ongoing events can be viewed, but for more information, we'll need to drill further into the property. From inside the property, you will see tiles that correspond to each sensor installed there. In this case, we can see this property has one sentry and four floodies. All are online and reporting. Clicking on the AC brings up the live gauge data. This is the pressure, temperature, and calculated superheat and subcool. On the side here is the AC or heat pump information that was entered when Sentry was installed. I'll show you how to change or update missing information shortly. Under the live data is the average runtime and event history. Average runtime is a percentage per day, and the recent history catalogs when the AC is operating outside of calculated specifications. Below this is the historic gauge data. These graphs can be set to day, week, month, and year. Additionally, individual data sets can be toggled on and off. These graphs are your best friend for spotting trends, validating installs or service work, and displaying the need to change out a system to homeowners. That's the info on the cooling system, but the info and settings for individual sensors can be found under the sensors view. From inside an individual sensor, you can see the health of the cellular connection. This tile allows for updating the cooling system info I talked about earlier. You can also delete a sensor from here should the need arise. But most importantly, the notifications tile controls which alerts will be pushed to you by email or phone. More than a diagnostic tool, the dashboard is an overview of a company's entire install base. The events and map view identify which units are not performing efficiently. Events are listed chronologically, but can also be toggled to only display current and ongoing events. If you need to know what your service calls will be for the day, look at this screen in the morning and it's all laid out for you. The map view is very similar to the event view. This is an overview of all properties currently being monitored. Problems can be identified at a glance. Green is healthy and yellow and red are worth looking into. That covers what the admin and team member accounts have access to, which brings us to the third type of account. This condensed view is what a homeowner sees. While they don't have access to gauge information, the platform still aims to provide tangible value. As you can see, they have visibility on electrical costs and runtime. We find that merely having visibility into AC power costs results in a decrease in usage. To give a homeowner this access, go to the sharing option under settings. From there, you can add their email address to the individual properties or add them to multiple properties simultaneously through the by person option. This is the same process as adding a team member, 
but the account they create will only have reduced access view and only to the properties you shared with them. If these different types of accounts and options seem confusing, don't worry. They'll become clear after using the system once or twice. What you need to know, having registered your first sensor, is this. The main account that you've just set up is the admin account. The first step is to invite everyone who will be installing or dealing with Sentry as a team member. This will make things easier for you as you continue to explore the full functionality of the dashboard. And those are the major functions of it. It's pretty simple and aims to make finding the data you need as quick as possible. The only thing left to cover are some of the finer settings. We'll go through your setting options one by one. Property settings can be changed individually by property. Most of the settings are geared towards water monitoring, but this is where you can delete properties if they're no longer using the product. Notification settings will change how push notifications are sent and to whom. The left tile dictates what communication methods you will receive alerts through. The center tile controls what time alerts can be pushed. And the right tile determines what types of condition will send an alert. Event definitions affect what will trigger water sensors. This allows you to set custom thresholds for temperature ranges, flow rates, and more. The limit can be set across all sensors or can be individually changed. So that's the dashboard. If you have any questions, remember, our support staff can always be reached at the orange chat button in the bottom right-hand corner. Thanks for listening.